Well, as we edge towards the running of the 2022 Miracle Mile, instead of going forward this time, we're going to look back to 2003 and 2004, in particular the latter. It's my special guest, Jodie Quinlan. Well, Jodie, great to catch up with you. As I said, 2003, 2004, wonderful memories, in particular 2004, but 2003 when Lance drove so he a victory in that particular Miracle Mile. Prior to that, you had a wonderful strike rate with that horse. Yeah, um, I just filled in when Lance was suspended through the owner, Colin Croft. He promised me a drive one day on his good horse, and Soaky was it. You managed to take out the Legends Mile, the Vic Classic, and also running third in the Kilmore Cup behind Persistency with him. Yeah, that was my only blemish I got beaten in the Kilmore Cup, but yeah, Miracle Mile stuck right out. 2004, now we go fast forward. What an atmosphere, no doubt still very fresh in your mind. Absolutely. Um, gives you goosebumps when you think about it or see it. And I just went for a walk up there and seen him on the wall and um, things you never forget. I think that that's probably what I always say. It's a once in a lifetime for me to be able to achieve that. And a lot of great drivers don't get to, so I'm very fortunate. Once again, Lance was suspended. What went through your mind when you got that phone call to say you're driving in the Miracle Mile? Yeah, look, it was a big opportunity. Um, I just had to hope that he drew good and he did. You got him by two metres on a particular occasion, beating Blake Fitzpatrick with Sand Pebbles. Yeah, look, he um, he led and sort of dictated. He had a great run and he won fairly comfortably, yep. No doubt the thrill of the crowd is still ringing in your ears. That, that atmosphere at Harold Park, you just couldn't beat it. No, I'd have to say of all the tracks and um, countries that I've driven, it, it takes the cake. Um, the people leaning over the fence, they can nearly touch you and um, the atmosphere coming down that straight second to none. And after that, you never got another drive. No, I only, um, I, well, probably it wasn't that long after Lance drove him, a little bit after that, and then he sort of retired him, so very fortunate. Your career in harness racing sort of like came via the gallops? Yeah, um, when my father was alive, mum and dad had gallopers. Um, both my uncles, Uncle Jeff Walker and Gary Quinlan, they sort of had the standard breads um, in the background, and weekends and stuff, I used to go up to them when Nan and Pop were alive, they were on the farm up there, and um, yeah, just the way things fell, um, mum ended up sort of, taking a step away from the gallops and went and got a job to put me through school and from there I followed the harness racing horses. You credit your mum Cheryl as your biggest influence? Yeah absolutely she's, she's always been my rock and um, if I think there's something I can't do mum reassures me that I can even if I can't. Outside of family who else were sort of like role models for you as you were coming through the ranks? Yeah, look, at the time, Gator Policino was, I think, one of the best drivers of the girls going around at that, that, that time, and I was sort of driving against her. Um, Lisa Drush just won a lot of good races on Lennon and that sort of thing. When I was a kid, you sort of watch those sort of people. But Gavin Lang, definitely, he... Um, and to be able to become good friends with him later in life, um, in my eyes, he's the best. 2019, you had a very severe accident in the car park at Melton. At that stage of your life and career, you must have thought this might be trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so sort of had a lot of falls and things and you sort of get back up and dust yourself off. But this one, I was a little bit older too in life and um, I got severely hurt and I um, broke three bones in my back and severely severed my uh, kidney. So um, I was out. I didn't drive for 11 months, yeah. Was that from being kicked? Yes, that's right, yep. How did it feel getting back into the sulky? Was there any nerves or was it just like just jumping back into the sulky and off we go again? Yeah, look, it's like riding a bike, but I, to be honest, I've got to think, you know, when I was hurt and I ended up in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk very far, well, I couldn't walk to start with. Um, it always went through my mind, would I drive again? And when you're in so much pain at different stages of recovery, you think, oh, it's not worth it, but... Um, yeah, here I am still dark, still going on a, on a much smaller scale. I still can't do what I used to do. Um, obviously getting older and I still sort of have, you know, repercussions from the injuries, but um, still doing it. Jodie, more importantly, you're still doing it and you're still driving plenty of winners, which is important during this part of the month with February and March. Team Teal and once again, you're very proudly involved. Yeah, that's right. Um, unfortunately, my mum had ovarian cancer, um, so that's where I become heavily involved with Duncan and Michael Taranto. And um, we started off with a set of teal colours that I wore, and from that it's just gone national wide. And to see it in New Zealand and even overseas with Duncan's Elder Baron horses, um, it's just amazing how big it's got. It's great. And surprising, well, not surprising in a way, but the lift that gives all the female drivers, they seem to grow 10 feet tall and they just love getting out there competing. Yeah, absolutely. If there's a, you know, a six-week um, period span that you want to drive a winner as many as you can, we always try really hard. <laughs> At this particular stage of your career, you've also had the pleasure and also the honour of driving for Emma Stewart. 
yeah, Clayton have been really good to me. Um, they were actually one of the first ones to throw me on when I come back, and I was fortunate enough to win the Cranbourne Cup on Phoenix Prince, and um, I've driven now and then for him ever since, and found myself on Act now, and he's been a really good horse to me, and he's got a really bright future, so hopefully he can um, qualify tonight. That's what we're here for. So back in the stables, we were wandering over. You've driven a beautiful Merc, Act now. He must be like driving that beautiful Merc. Yeah, he can be. He's um, he's got speed to burn, and he this this sort of last season, um, he's really adapted to be sort of a really nice racehorse, and he's starting to learn what it's all about now. Well, from harness racing, you're a sports enthusiast. Yeah, I used to play a lot of sport when I was in my younger days, and that. Um, I like basketball. I used to play basketball and ref and indoor cricket and all sorts of things. <laughs> um, nowadays, I have a jet ski. You just love horsepower. Yeah, uh, probably goes a little bit quicker than these. <laughs> Jody, it's been great to catch up with you. Good to see you fit, healthy, driving plenty of winners, mate. Continue, and great to see you in action here at Climate Angle. Thank you very much.